The cholera outbreak in Hammondskrals now claimed 17 lives. The Gauteng Health Department saying there are 29 confirmed laboratory cases. 165 patients have been treated at the Jubilee District Hospital, including 18 who have been transferred to nearby facilities. At the same time, Twani Mayor Celia Brunk says further tests are expected to be conducted to determine the source of the outbreak. And there are concerns that water tankers have been distributing contaminated water. Tests of water supplied from taps show no cholera contamination. People showing cholera symptoms are being urged to report to their nearest health facilities. A specialist team is being deployed to find out exactly what led to this fatal cholera outbreak in Hamans Kral in Tuane. And as we've been reporting, uh, the deaths of at least 17 people and at least 165 six patients at the Jubilee District Hospital, 18 others transferred to other facilities. And beyond Gauteng, cholera cases have been reported in the Free State and Limpopo. The Deputy Water and Sanitation Minister, David Makhlobo, joins us now to share progress on this developing story. De uh, Deputy Minister, good evening to you and welcome. What is the latest on your plan to get to the bottom of this in Hammond's Crow. A, a very good day, evening, uh, Iman, and to all your viewers along across the length and breadth of our land. Um, we want to confirm the following, that um, as we are part of the team, uh, when we met uh, in that uh, particular uh, Jubilee Hospitals, after the instruction from our ministers, we are continuing with the investigations. And in terms of the investigations, uh, Iman, we must not rush and say that um, conclusively these are the results because when you do testing for water, there are those uh, results that can come up quickly, especially in the lab within 24 hours especially when you test the, the coliform or E. coli in water. And uh, you can also be in a position to check the pH, whether you check the conductivity. But ordinarily, if we are going to find whether there are symptoms or signs of any cholera bacteria uh, or salumena, what you need, those tests, they need time. They will take about a week. Because after we have got the water samples, you must then be able to prepare what I can call it a culture or a medium, wherein you are going to be able to take some water drops after we have prepared that particular culture. And then you do an incubation. And after we have done an incubation, it takes a little bit of time for the bacteria to be able to germinate so that you can do that. And right. I will be very wary to start to say the water is free from cholera on the basis of my own training and on the basis of the advice from our team. But the investigation team, uh, in terms of the isolation of the problem, remember there are three systems. There's a system, the water is provided by rainwater that is in terms of the bulk that is treated and the system that is provided by Mahalis. But then there's a system that comes from TEM. What is not disputed, Iman, is that where is the source of the problem? The wastewater treatment plant called the Roy Val, we all know that it is overcapacitated, is operating beyond the design capacity. And we know now that the work that was supposed to correct the problems of Roy Val, it has stopped. Therefore, we cannot be in a position now and come and claim that the water that comes from Roy Val, ultimately treated by the timber system is clean. That will be very mischievous. Right. Let's allow the investigation because Iman, that water when it comes out, and partially treated by a plant that is not 100% functional, the effluent goes to the Apis River. From the Apis River, the water goes to local uh, dam, dam, and from the local dam, it goes to uh, the timber plant. That timber plant is the one that treats water, but is not designed to be able to treat these high levels okay. of nitro nit nitrates. Therefore, uh that's what the team is concentrating on. The last point, Iman, the issues of provision for water in the meantime, we are very satisfied in the cooperation between ourselves and Swan, that the water tankers that are being uh, moving around Amman's ground, 52 of them 
those water tankers that are around the city of Tswane, they are picking up water, obstructing water in the right obstruction points of rainwater and Mahalis. And we can guarantee that that particular source of water is good. But okay. we have insisted on Tswane that let's have the, the, the issues of the schedule of these water tankers. Lastly, that water in the tank, it must be tested on an ongoing basis. And the test must be put on the website of the city of Tswane. That component, it has not happened where the test results all for right. the water that is being given to people right now. I've got to come in there, Minister, and I appreciate the background because it's important that people understand how all of this works together, this complex issue works together. Here's what I just want to clarify with you really quickly. So the city says that preliminary tests find no cholera in Temba and Hammond's Kraal pipeline. They say they are still waiting for tests from the water tankers. You're telling us, um, you know, a, a story that, that sounds to be a little bit different in terms of where those tank, the tanker water is coming from, from sources that are credible and clean. So there's no risk of that. What do the residents do with this information? Do they trust the city? Do they trust you? Are you working together with the city? In other words, the testing that the city is doing, is that the same testing you're doing? The first thing that we must uh, indicate, preliminary results does not mean final results. When you get preliminary results, Iman, it will not tell you definitely that whether cholera is there or not there. Because when you want to do the same thing for cholera, you will have to be able to test for salmonella and the cholera bacteria. And you go to the lab, and in the lab you prepare a, a medium, what is called a culture there. It takes time to do those particular tests. We will want that uh, we should not be able to say conclusively uh, uh, that particular issue of the uh, timber plant must be removed from the investigation. It can't be removed from the investigation at this point because we know that the source of the problems are coming from the Roy Val, the Roy Val that fits into that river I've mentioned until to the timber plant. Should, should the residents trust you, well. Minister? Should, should the residents trust what the department is saying or what the city is saying? Let, let, let me clarify, Iman, so that we don't cause confusion and being accused that we're politically. The water that has been coming from the timber plant has been in people's homes through the taps over a period of more than two years. And the message from the city all the time, they have never said that the water that comes from timber plant is fit for human consumption. They have always said that this water is not fit it must be used only for laundry. It must be used for issues like gardening and other things. But for human consumption, it must never be used. And our message, the water from the taps that come from the timber treatment plant, it can't be used for human consumption. And it's our message. And the precautions of uh, issues of wash, wash and campaign in terms of using detergents, uh, the searches that must be done, then the boiling of the water, all those messages in mind, they remain relevant. We are working with the city of Tswane. We shall be able to produce the results with Minister Mkunu. And tomorrow, as a task team from the health department, social development, and ourselves in Tswane, we'll be able to get the results. Then we'll communicate that these are the final results. At this stage, we want to say to our people, let's use the water with that precaution in terms of how that water must be utilized. Okay. The water that comes from the taps. But the water from the water tanks, I can guarantee you that that water in terms of the abstraction point is abstracted at points of good quality. And if the quality was not good, many citizens in Swane, including us who are staying here, would be sick if the water was coming from the Mahalis and the rainwater pipeline. Final quick question, Minister. There's a very important history here. You know about the SAHRC report asking for national government to take over from the city. The city rejected that. The department contacted National Treasury to fund the intervention that the SAHRC recommend, but Treasury said that the city had already been given funds to upgrade the Royval wastewater treatment plant through uh, one of the grants in urban settlements development. Royval is the genesis of the water pollution problems there, but the city hasn't done what it's supposed to do isn't it time that you took control from the city and just get this sorted out yourself? You can see what's happening in the Tswane City Council today, even as the budget is, uh, you know, trying to get passed. 
I, I want to assure South Africans, like Minister Mkuno did, and the instruction of our president, we are intervening in Swanin, and despite the history of non-cooperation in the past, the mayor now, the current mayor, has agreed to work with us. On Friday, with the minister, with the mayor, we will work out the final comprehensive plan to resolve the issues, but including how are we going to fund, because the funding of revamping the entire system, it runs into billions of friends. After we've done that agreement on Friday, we'll be able to approach National Treasury, but that agreement will be led by the Department of Water and Sanitation, but it will be in a form of a court declaratory order because we will not be in a position to rely about the instability of governance in Swani and people reneging on that particular agreement that will conclude with the executive mayor Brink with Minister Mkuno on Friday. Human Settlements, Water and Sanitation Deputy Minister, thank you for your time, David Mahlobo.